Hey guys, what is up? It is Mark with Boozy and Bezel. Today I'm bringing you another Scotch review. I'm very excited for this one. Um, I did take a week off. I had my allergies kicking in last week, so I couldn't really taste or smell. So that was not been the best time to make a video. Yeah, my stuff would have been way off. It would have been really funny um, if I would have done it, but uh, you know, the first few weeks of the warmer weather really killed me. So I did not want to uh, you start mixing around my medication plus a bunch of uh, booze but anyways so we're gonna kick this off and this we're gonna kick it off with a Highland Scotch today one that I really enjoy and I think most people if they haven't had it will also really enjoy so let's kick it off with my wrist check so today I am wearing uh, one of the watches that I wear most frequently um, this is actually a micro brand watch. Micro brand watches are watches that tend to sell on a smaller volume. A lot of times they're hand assembled, hand QC'd. You know, they're usually run by one or two guys. They only have one or two staff members. This brand is called Notos. They're actually based out of Los Angeles. The two owners, Wes and Colin, are like cool as hell. I met them a few times when they're in the city, when I've been out in LA and I have a few other watches. So this is actually the Retrospect 2 Stratus Sky. It is a beautiful um, black glossy ceramic bezel with a very nice dial that changes from light blue to dark blue to teal um, with a very, with a light blue second hand. It is awesome. Their Miyota movements and their prices are fantastic. You know, Cohen hand assembles these bad boys at their headquarters, his office, or, you know, apartment. Um, and it's really, really cool, the fact that they, uh, you know, take the time to do all this. It, I, yeah, the QC, the quality, everything about this watch is just, it's, it, it's, it's great. Um, and their price points are fantastic. I highly recommend checking out a lot of micro brand watches. You'll see me talk about a lot of micro brands because I have, quite a few and yeah Notos check them out check them out on Instagram at Notos watches anyways so to get into it when I was in Scotland uh, in 2019 one of the missions um, that Melissa's dad was on was to ask everyone you know what's their favorite scotch what do they like what do they do this and there's a few times that a name kept coming back and people kept saying Dalwini, Dalwini 15, Dalwini 15. So obviously we had to try it. So Dalwini is probably one of the most driven past distilleries in Scotland. It is right alongside A889. Right alongside A and if you ever travel into the Highlands, you pass this beautiful white and brown um, distillery and whenever you take especially if you take like a tour into the highlands they always drive you past it because it's beautiful when you drive through this tiny little town called Dalwini and you on either side you have mountains you have a beautiful walk and it's just you're coming over these rolling hills and it's just a very gorgeous scenery when you, you have the greenery and the lock and which is river or body of water um, and it's just it's like it's very magical and you come across this distillery and a fun fact about Dalwini is it's actually the second highest distillery in Scotland it is not the tallest or the, the highest above sea level it's the second that but it is the first that has a visitor center so that's kind of cool. And Delwini was founded in 1898 in Delwini, Scotland, which is a very quaint, tiny town. It was, the name comes from the Gaelic term for plane of meeting. So the best way to describe where this distillery is, is it is in between two major roads the mount, the beautiful, huge mountains on either side. And this used to be an old cattle route. So this was a place of meeting and the plains met. 
And so that's where they got this name Dalwini from. What better way than walking your cattle, stopping off for some really nice drums, right? So I think that's where they, they came from it. But when I say the breath, the, the scenery around this is utterly breathtaking, because it is. It, it's, you know, uh, as you can tell, kind of wish I was back there right now, but whatever. Another fun random fact uh, about Delwini is they're actually the coldest working distillery, which is a really weird um, fact. But they, they don't crank the AC on their workers. They, <laughs> they actually, the, the town of Delwini is considered to be one of the coldest, you know, normally inhabited areas of Scotland. So the average temperature yearly is minus six degrees Celsius in the winter. And for you Americans, um, that can't do the math quickly in your head. It's roughly 21, a little over 21 degrees Fahrenheit, 21.2-ish um, degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not terribly cold, but it, that, you know, as your average temperature, uh, it gets pretty cold. But the winters get really harsh. They have 20 foot um, snow drifts. That's massive. So I think all the, you know, all that goes into the character of making this, glorious bottle. So Delwini is owned by Diageo. So the big guys, and because it's the big guys, they there's very minimal information on the on the label and the box. So it's the assumption is it is chill filtered and there is color added. I don't care for this particular bottle. Some of them, yeah, this no, definitely do not. Currently, Delwini has a few different lines or in their everyday core. They have the 15, the Distiller's Edition, they have the Winter Gold, the Winter Frost, which is the Game of Thrones Edition, and they also have the 25, 29, and 36 year old as their regular offerings uh, right now. So I only have uh, access to the Delwini 15, the Distiller's Edition, the Winter Gold does pop up here every so often. And then the, the Winter Frost. The Winter Frost I can find pretty regularly. Um, so the Dell 15 goes for around 65 to 75 bucks. And, you know, let's see if it's worth it. It is a 15 year old. So for that price, it is pretty cheap. Let's crack this bad boy. I'm gonna need a straw later. I just built it on my floor. The first thing immediately that you notice is it does have a very light, very delicate hint of smoke. It is peated very slightly. That's one of the reasons why they picked the location for the distillery, because they had the peat bogs right around the lock. I'm also getting a little bit of fruit, a little, but mainly honey is coming through here. It's very sweet. A little bit of floral scent, but it's definitely more, um, you get the delicate of the peat, you do get the honey, and then the floral, very it's it's very sweet. Yeah. Ah, and it just uh, color added, so it's you know definitely a no-no in the whiskey world, but it's it's just so beautiful, beautiful color. It's very oily too. You can see it sticking to the sides. Hmm. Usually chill phrase chill filtration makes it less oily, but. It's definitely still pretty oily. All right, let's go in for a one last sniff. Let's go. Let's go in for a, a sip. Cheers. Uh, malty, creamy, honey. Very delicate again with the peat. 
sweet. Yeah, I, I, this is this is a very very honey sweet scotch with a very delicate peat. Oh, and I, when I say delicate, it's it's very delicate. You're getting the malt, honey, a little creamy, and then the peat. It's very oh, it's just so drinkable. I could drink this all day. And that's a problem. Well, I guess it would be a problem if I drank it all day. I don't think my work would like that. Yeah, whatever. The finish on this though, it's very long. That's due to the oily, the oiliness of this. It is malty, it's almost slightly, I don't know if you'd say it's nutty, but it does have a very, some almonds. One more sip, I gotta, um, I just notice it. Oh yeah, palate honey, creamy, malty, a little bit of smoke. That honey though, that's so sweet. Finish long, oily, a little bit of nutty, creamy, slight malty. Now with scotch, I do always add a little water. This is only 43%, so it, it's not very high, but with a little bit of water, this can, this really, really opens up. Again, my spoon, that Mrs. D is not missing. Floral notes definitely slightly dissipate. It's definitely more creamier and honey. The, the peat definitely, the, the smoke definitely like dissipates a little bit. Oh yeah, creamy, definitely creamy. Cheers. This is where the shines. A little bit of water really opens this up. It's, it has changed its palate slightly. That creamy, I was like saying is slightly creamy. This is now a very creamy, malty, honey rich. It's just a little bit of water. I, I can't say that enough really makes a creamy sensation and being so oily it just it feels creamy in the mouth finish is definitely still still just as long i'm actually tasting a little bit of almonds now on the finish so that nuttiness was there but it's a little bit more almondy but it's still creamy. This is this becomes significantly more creamy with that little bit of water. That little bit of water really helps this. So overall, I I definitely recommend this. I did have the chance to try the distiller's edition. I, I enjoyed that as well. I actually prefer this over the distiller's edition, but I, I wouldn't turn down either. Um, I, I would definitely pick it up. This can get a little pricey. I have seen this on the shelf for 95, 100. I don't, I don't think I would, I, I wouldn't pay that. I would pay 80, 85. If I would, you know, I wouldn't go and seek out the distiller's edition, which is around 90 to 95. But it, if I had a choice between this or the distiller's edition at that price, I would, I would pick this. Definitely, yeah. I would be more than happy to have either one of them in my bar collection. And I will always have this, especially for guests that aren't sure if they like scotch, because this is a perfect one for you to try, being that it's so lightly peated. And this could be a gateway to some people. And I, and I understand why a lot of Scots say this is one of their favorite scotches. And they would, when they have friends over, they break this out as like a special occasion. And uh, to, to be honest, I, you know, Place of meetings, I can see that. You know, that when I do have friends over, I have a good time and I do break this out. So this is, you know, this is actually my second bottle of Del Winnie. It's the only bottle of scotch that I've actually gone through since I've been on this journey. And that, that, that shows how much this, this is, that I do like it. And I definitely, definitely recommend it. If you're, 
this would could potentially be your gateway drug into the scotch world so next week i am going to again ask alexa to pick a random number between one and five for me and let's see what she comes up with alexa pick a number between one and five your random number between one and five is four four so four is going to be a little fun to do so that my friend is going to be a wheat this is my first wheat review i'm a huge wheat fan and i'm pretty excited for that i don't know what i'm going to pick yet i don't have too many wheats i'm starting to build my collection of wheats because they've just i mean you see the craze with wellers and pappy so let me, let me, let me figure it out I'm not sure if I'm going to do the wheats as only weeded bourbons or if I'm going to do the wheats as just straight wheats. Huh. And please like, subscribe, notifications on, leave me a comment, if you, you know, anything to help me out if you like this video. If not, give it a thumbs down. Whatever. This is for fun. Um, but, you know, let me know your guys' thoughts. Comment down below if you, if you would like to try this. And what is your favorite Highland scotch? Let me know. I, I can go pick it up if you want me to review it. And follow me on Instagram so you can check out some of the updates as I kind of go through the buying, whether you know I'm going out on a hunt, digging through my bar cart, meeting up with friends, not really as COVID, and you know, all that fun stuff. You guys have a great night. Cheers. This is burning my cut.